Hello, and welcome to another episode of the William Branham Historical Research Podcast. I'm your host, John Collins, the author and founder of William Branham Historical Research at william-branham.org. And with me, I have my co-host, researcher, and friend, James Goad. And together, we're discussing the very weird things that preachers say, why they say them, and how they relate back to the latter rain healing revivals of the late 1940s through the 1960s. James, today we have a doozy of an episode. <clears throat> I, um, When I saw this one come in, I started laughing for many various reasons, but the biggest of which, you know, this episode <clears throat> is talking about Elvis, Pat Boone, the Beatles, you know, things from way back in the 50s and 60s. And as you know, this cult of personality and many of its splinter groups, they're stuck in the 1950s <clears throat> to the extent I grew up. You know, I'm I left this thing in 2012 and I want to say it might have been that same year or at least one of the years very close to that. <clears throat> I heard a sermon just railing people for naming their children Elvis. And, <laughs> you know, I didn't think about it back then, but now I'm thinking, what in the world, man, who in today's world, who names their kid Elvis in the first place? And number two, what business is it of the pastors, what they name their kid? And um, <clears throat> we've talked about this many times. My whole world revolves around Looney Tunes. So in my head, when I think about don't name the kid Elvis, <clears throat> I'm actually not thinking about Elvis Presley. I'm more thinking about the, you know, the hillbilly bird that's got the shotgun going after <laughs> Bugs Bunny and Looney Tunes and his father, his pappy's calling out to him. OK, Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what goes through my head because we're so far disconnected from this but to the people who are indoctrinated in this cult of personality this is a real thing man you cannot name your kid elvis and if you do that kid because of his name because his name is actually more powerful <laughs> than the gospel of jesus christ i'm laughing but that's really sad his name is more powerful than the gospel, and therefore that kid will turn out to be a bad kid. And if you, some of these pastors will just outright say it, that kid's going to hell if you name him Elvis. I personally know people <laughs> whose names were changed because of this. It wasn't the Elvis one, but there were a few different names you couldn't name your kid. And <laughs> I knew one guy that after his, after his family joined the message, this guy... <laughs> His name was changed because the, the power of Jesus Christ was not powerful enough to save him because of the name that his father had given him. That's how weird this is. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it, it's so crazy because, you know, when Branham specifically calls people out by name like Elvis and Pat Boone, um, a lot of the ministers in the movement feel extremely um you know, like, like they've got the right to go out and, and, and really dig in on these people because the prophet said that they were demonically inspired. So therefore, you know, everything that they, they put out is, is just, is just demonic trash. And if you listen to the music, you know, you're, you're partaking in demonic trash and it's going to take over your life and it's going to infect your soul. And it, it just gets so blown so far out of proportion that listening to something like Pat Boone, for instance, if you just listen to one of his songs, then, then if, if you're, if you're brought up in this movement and indoctrinated by it, you're believing that what you're hearing are words that are demonically inspired. And it's, it's so crazy because if you listen to Pat Buen's music, it's like the most tame of the tame. <laughs> I, mean, I don't even, <laughs> I, I really don't even know how, how, how Branham got there in the first place, but the, it, it's just, but it's there. And so ministers just use it and they run with it and they use it to scare people and, 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 and create such a big, huge thing out of it. And I think this first clip that we we're going to go into is a really great example of how it's just expanded and blown up. But yeah, let's take a look at this one and dive in a bit further. Yeah, you know, it's like we talk about Elvis Presley and Pat Boone and all this and all these young fellas going, who? So I guess we got to keep things going. But if you stay in the tapes, you'll know who that is. You won't need an explanation of who they were. They were devils in leather shoes. That's the way the prophet put it. 
<laughs> devils in leather shoes. You know, it's funny, all of the loaded language that this cult has, <clears throat> an outsider come in and hear that, they don't even grasp the, the depth of that statement because in the cult, one of the cult rules is you're not allowed to wear blue suede shoes <laughs> because this cult is stuck in the 1950s. So these guys are devils in, <laughs> devils in leather shoes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so crazy because, you know, I, I for one, didn't even know who Pat Boone was growing up in this thing because all these things were completely hidden away from me because even like something like Elvis was so off limits. I mean, I, I, I had, I had run across, you know, Elvis's music in like, um, you know, other media and stuff like that. Just, just, you know, consuming other forms of entertainment and it's, it's injected in there. But yeah, it's like, you know, I don't know, man. It, it's, it's so crazy, especially the Pat Boone one because it really, it, it just really, doesn't make sense and and <laughs> oh man and, and even to the fact that just you know how this minister goes in and is is convincing all the all the people that the amount of demons that are coming at them and and that you know and, and linking it into all this stuff with pat boone and elvis it's just it's this fear scare that they that they put on the people to make it seem like they're on they're on the razor's edge you know and, and it's like you know by god's grace we're not listening to elvis or pat boone because it's just infested with demons and they're gonna get you if you don't watch out it's just uh it's just ridiculous <laughs> yeah <clears throat> and what's ironic is pat boone got his start <clears throat> in um, Centennial Park in Nashville. That's where the Nashville Parthenon is. <clears throat> and if you followed our historical research, you know, William Branham was not quite truthful about his past. And <clears throat> one of the things in his past, he was holding a religious revival with Roy Davis, the second in command of the Klan, and Caleb Ridley, the supreme religious chaplain of the Klan, also in Centennial Park. <clears throat> and that's where really the Pentecostal Baptist Church of God sect, that's where it began to explode and grow from Nashville. It actually started prior to this, but Nashville was the big event because you had Caleb Ridley, <clears throat> who was working with other leaders in what was called the Supreme Kingdom, which we'll get into in the podcast as well. But all of this, all this weird history that the cult has tried to erase. Well, here's Pat Boone, who also got his start right there in the same place. Man, I tell you what, it, it is it is crazy because so many ministers try to run away from all of that research that the all all of the Roy Davis research and the Branham connections. And boy, I know that's not really the focus of this one, but it's it is it is crazy. You know, it just further goes to show you know how much of a fraud Branham was, and that you know not only did he you know why would you hide those associations if you didn't know there was a problem, but you shift. You shift all of the evilness, not on your own actions, on the on the things that you partook in and the things that you were a part of, and maybe and looks like were part of carrying on through your through your ministry, but you shift the blame onto Elvis and Pat Boone, <laughs> you know, because those guys <laughs> are literally uh, sending souls to hell through through their through their uh, entertainment, according to Branham, you know, and it, it's just ah, <laughs> it's just crazy, man, and, and the fact that you can't, you know, and and. The thing about it is, and not only the, the pop music that, uh, these entertainers would have produced, but even the more, um, gospel stuff is even demonized as well because it's still coming from the same artist. So, like, if Pat Boone sang Amazing Grace, it's like, well, that might be all good. Maybe he's got a great, great gift, but, you know, he was still led of the devil as, according to the ministers in this movement, you know, and it, it, it's sad because it, it allowed, it, it extremely uh, minimizes the amount of uh, entertainment you can actually, if any at all, depending on the group that you're in, that you're able to partake in. But even then, you're like, well, can I listen to this one religious song by Pat Boone? And you're like, no, you can't listen to that one because that one's going to send you to hell. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, the irony, man, Elvis Presley sang Only Believe. That's William Branham's theme song. And he's I've actually <clears throat> I have a friend who was in the message who didn't realize you weren't supposed to listen to Elvis. And <clears throat> he had an entire collection of Elvis's gospel records and they were actually pretty good songs. I mean, <laughs> I, I listened to them, and I'm as a kid, I knew that I wasn't supposed to, according to the cult rules. And so my head's playing tug of war. Well, well, this sounds really good, and <laughs> it doesn't sound any different than the, you know, the Blackwood Brothers music that I was listening to. <laughs> but yet, this is wrong because his name is Elvis, <clears throat> and Pat Boone 
you know, in the late sixties, I can't remember the exact year, but he started singing, switching to gospel and he toured as a family of gospel singers. It was called Pat Boone and the family who prays. And so, you know, William Branham didn't know all that before he died. Well, these ministers who are stuck in the 1950s, they also don't know this when they're blasting this guy. So <laughs> it's just, you know, so messed up. And, you know, they I know this episode is more than just Pat Boone. But if you take everything down to its origins in history and understand what was going on in the white supremacy groups, you begin to understand why Branham was doing this. And. The other one, you know, when I first escaped the cult, I, <laughs> like you said about Pat Boone, I, one of the first things that I did when I realized that this whole thing was a fraud, I downloaded through, it wasn't Spotify, as one one of the platforms, but I downloaded the Be- Beatles Anthology, which is a whole collection of their best music. And I was expecting something that was just going to be, you know, out there and scary and it was going to intimidate me because I was this humble little message Pentecostal person. And I listened to it and I thought, man, this sounds a lot like elevator music. I don't even like it that much. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, well, that's a that's a very great segue into our next uh, into our next clip here. Um, You know, the, the fear that is put in people's minds over over these these entertainers from the time that Branham was going around and doing his revivals and things like that. Um, it it reaches such levels of absurdity that even accidentally in 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 in, in the words of this minister, having a Beatles song come up in your dream is so troubling in their spirit because they're like, Oh no, Oh no. I, I, I was humming a Beatles song in my dream. And it, it's just, it's crazy because it's like when you're dreaming, your brain is working on it on you, you. It's your subconscious at work. You don't really have control of what's going on there, but you know, it's, it creates such fear that it's like, Oh no, what does this say about me? But uh, let's roll into this next clip here and let's dive in a bit further. I, w- I was, you know, sleeping one night, and I, be- I began to dream that I was counseling somebody. And I was counseling, I think it was a couple, and, and I-, I began to say to them, you know, I see what the problem here is that you need love. You really need love in your relationship. All you need is love. <laughs> All you need is love. Da, 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 da. All... And I woke up. And now you have to understand... For those of you that don't know, that was a Beatles song. All right. And I woke up and I was so grieved. How could that happen in my dream? I thought, what is wrong with me? I'm so carnal. Now, I was never a Beatles fan. You got to understand. I never was into their music. And so I thought to myself, how did that get into my subconscious? How, how did it get there? And I was... Uh, several days pondering that. Lord, how did that get inside of me? And one day, I was looking on my tablet at a news article, and when the, before the news article came on, an advertisement came on. And it was an advertisement, brother, you know, give me a rough time over this, for Blackberry. Okay? And the background music was that song. And so the devil, through that advertisement, sowed that into my subconscious without me even realizing it. See, that's why you have to watch what you look at, watch what you listen to, all of these things, because the devil has access to your mind. (laughs) So this guy has a real problem with all you need is love. (laughs) This is coming from a, a message cult that has clearly been a grandchild of a hate group. All you need is love is their evil, right? Right? Well, <laughs> James, I can truly say to this minister, when I was in that cult, I also had a dream about a cult minister. And, oh, my gosh, it scared me. So maybe that was evil, too. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's it's crazy. Um, you know, the, the, the very fact that, you know, Branham put so much emphasis on um, demonizing uh, groups like the Beatles and Elvis and Pat Boone and, and others, um, you know, <sighs> 
and, and, you know, I don't know. Maybe this minister truly, truly was troubled by this, uh, this situation. Um, you know, but, and, and I know others in their churches with the way that the, the programming comes across. Uh, you know, I know that this, if, if this would have happened to them, it's very possible that they would have been troubled by it too. But the fact of it is, it's just a dream. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, you, you can't like, I'm going to go to hell because the devil, the, the devil is so concerned about my dream that he's going to sneak a Beatles song in there just to torment me. It's just like, ah, come on, man. I mean, what, what, what is really the focus here? If, if we're so worried about what the devil's putting into our dream and, 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 and I, I, subliminally heard it through an advertisement and so so now it's popping up in my dream and i'm so troubled because i don't know where it came from because i don't listen to beatles music and it's just like oh man it the, the 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 loops and and the hoops and levels you have to go through in this group to c- constantly live up to the purity test is so destructive to so many people because that purity test is is it's 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 uh, you're unable to match it no matter what you do because because they're <laughs> for one thing Everything conflicts in, 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 in all of his sermons, all of, every, there's, there's nothing that is, is cohesive from beginning to end. It all conflicts. And so the purity test from that standpoint alone is impossible to match. And then let alone all the other things he, he demonized for, for whatever reasons he had just goes to further make it even that much harder to even, even live up to in, in, you know, to, to, match that purity that you have to have. It's, it's just insane. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable, man. <clears throat> you know, I'm not afraid to admit this, and I will admit this to the world. I watch so many of the cartoons, and especially the Looney Tunes, that there are often nights where I have a dream about Looney Tunes and <laughs> Bugs Bunny or Daffy Duck. And <clears throat> whenever, and when it comes right down to it, after I wake up and I think about my past, and you look at some of the absurd things that are happening in Looney Tunes, well, this whole cult, man, <laughs> it's like a Looney Tunes religion. <laughs> if you think about all the silly stuff, I mean, again, Again, in today's world, what person is going to name their per- their child Elvis? And if they do, what business is it of the pastor how they name their kid? And, you know, I can't stress enough. If the God is so powerless that the name of your child is going to send him to hell, you might have the wrong God. I'm just saying. <clears throat> but whenever it comes down to the historical aspect of this, that is what was fascinating to me. When I began researching for the book, The Preacher Behind the White Hoods, I became curious, why on earth did were these men singled out? It wasn't just Elvis and Pat Boone. There were others. And <clears throat> Ricky, you couldn't name your child Ricky. That's another one. And I began to study what was happening in the civil rights movement and the white supremacies that were opposing the civil rights television media i mean that's you could study that for years and not even skim the surface but what you have is you have these very very bad men who like it or not were using a religious platform to push a racist agenda and it was spreading throughout the churches and they were rising up against these people and the people that they're rising up against were the ones who were supportive of the integration of the races in the school systems and they were in strong opposition to the violence that was spreading against people with black skin so you had people like elvis who stood for civil rights you had the beatles who stood for civil rights you had um you know, many, many other like uh, what's the guy's name? The guy from Davy Crockett. Um, I'm drawing a blank on his name, but you can watch the Disney movies on Davy Crockett. Well, that guy was also singled out by the Klan because in the Davy Crockett TV series, I think it was the Davy Crockett one. He was in a couple of them, but it had one of the first. Uh, black cast for the for the show and it turned into this big deal because now you're giving a person with black skin such great amount of television time well they rose up in opposition to this guy well he's another one that william branham singled out and said you all these kids who were watching these davy crockett's and wearing the cap they're all scum of the earth if you think take what he's saying out to its literal conclusion <clears throat> well all of this was just an agenda by the religion who were tied to this religious leaders who were tied to the white supremacy to try to stamp out anything that might support the integration of races. And at its core, that is a very, very evil thing. 
So <laughs> I'll, I'll put it back to the first one we listened to. Here's a man who is blasting people for all I need is love, and they're preaching hate. One of the common uh, things that gets said in, in, in rebuttal to to a lot of the things that is are exposed to um, through this channel and others is that you know it's like there's always a pushback against against the the racism because it's like well we're not you know the the they they say that we're not racist you know the Brandon wasn't racist and all these things like that but when you get down I mean it's it's been explored it's been exposed there there is no getting around it but at the same time when when you dig in and realize that most of the things that get repeated today. <laughs> when you realize that the that the reason why they they're preached about is because of a clan agenda it really just takes it to a whole nother level because it's not just like preaching it's preaching against integration because that alone should have been the nail in Branham's coffin but then you go even further and it's just every other piece of entertainment that you can't you know it it's it, there's always some sort of element to it that you know it was pushing for civil rights or pushing for integration or, or trying to normalize these things in an era where it wasn't quite accepted and then you see Branham always coming out against these things and it's like how can you I, I guess if if you look at some of these things in isolation, you can see, oh, I don't see how they connect. But when you look at the larger context and you put it all together, you're just like, this guy was a raging racist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what's really sad, I mean, I look back on my childhood and there's there are a lot of things I regret. I did have a decent childhood, but there are a lot of things that I regret. <clears throat> and one of the things is trying to wade, trying to navigate what is pop culture whenever you weren't allowed to have pop culture. And so you'd be in school and people would make these references and everybody would laugh and you're just kind of scratching your head. You don't understand it because they're talking about something that every one of them in the room knows and you don't because they tried to shield you from media. And one of the, one of the byproducts of this that is horrific when you think about it there came a point whenever leaders in these religious white supremacy groups, you know, these Christian identity groups, when they realized that they weren't able to weigh the tide and news media, music, television, radio, all of these things were going to start playing things that opposed their worldview. Well, the easy way to stop it is, okay, let's shield everybody from that worldview. Okay, you're not allowed to watch television. You're not allowed to listen to your radio. You're not allowed to do all that. You can't go to the movies anymore. And, you know, I'm sure that was hard for people who were in it and suddenly they weren't allowed to any longer. But then they had offspring and the offspring grew up and never got to do these things. Whenever I was a child in the cult, you could not watch <laughs> the television. Now it's Netflix, right? All these, all the cult people are saying, well, I don't watch TV. I watch it on my internet. But they're missing the premise of <laughs> what, the, what this agenda was. It was to shield you from anything that opposed your cult indoctrination. And it just it robbed us of our lives. When they shield you from the actual source, the entertainment itself, and, and, you, and you can't consume it, and um, you, there, there's there's a layer, there, there's a barrier between you and the entertainment. And the only way you hear about it in these groups, if you're if you're fully conformed and you're not partaking in the entertainment that they're telling you not to, um, the only way that you interface with it and hear about it is through the ministers and through the lens in which they're presenting it to you. Now, that all, takes us into this next clip here. And one of the things that happens is because they'll inject what Branham said in, into this stuff. And then, and then they'll, they'll use it to create uh, very damaging things that get said over these pulpits. And this example here is even more troubling because it's being said in the context of what I believe is a Sunday school. Um, I mean, there, there's, there's young people in the audience and the title of, of, of the sermon is Sunday school. Um, and the topic at hand is the Beatles and how the haircut is a homosexual haircut. And if you partake in the Beatles and you get a homosexual spirit on you, very damaging, very bad things. But let's let's go into this clip and uh, dive in a bit further. By the way, do yourself a favor once and look, Google what the Beatles looked like in the 1960s. Because he said he refers specifically to the Beatles, Beatles haircut as a homosexual spirit over and over and over again. 
It's not something to play with. All right. There was, you know, and he mentioned he mentioned short pants. It, I'm going to paraphrase what he said. It used to be wrong in a message church for men to wear pant, wear wear shorts. It used to be that way. I don't. I mean, it still is. I'm sorry. I don't care what you're doing. Brother Branham said that it was it was to for a man to pair, put on a pair of shorts was as, as if he was putting on a pair of women's underwear. I, I I don't. I mean, I don't know. It's just, and we can make all kinds of excuses, but. Men, please explain to me what is the context in which you would put on a pair of women's underwear, and that's the context you can put on a pair of shorts. <laughs> oh, my gosh, James. How many days do you wake up during the week, and you look in the mirror, <clears throat> and you got your comb out, and you think, boy, I just really want to get a 1950s Beatles haircut, because that's going to make <laughs> me feel more like a man. <laughs> it's What world are these guys living in, man? And... More to the point, why are they being so deceptive? You've got William Branham, whose two right-hand men are homosexual, and everybody knew it. My grandfather knew it. Lee Vale, who was William Branham, called him Dr. Lee Vale, who was his publicist. He knew it, and he openly stated that the, William Branham was traveling around with homosexual men. And he, go, he went so far as to say, which I didn't know this until he said it, <clears throat> that the campaign leader after Gordon Lindsay, who was leading William Branham, touring him all around the world, was a f- open homosexual. He was openly gay in the revivals. And this guy doesn't mention that. He will mention the Beatles because that's, you know, it's part of the cult indoctrination. And he rails the people in the shorts at the end of this. Well, why doesn't he just hold up a picture of William Branham wearing his shorts that he's <laughs> condemning <laughs> while he's making this condemnation? It just goes to show that the people who are preaching this, they themselves are so indoctrinated that they can't see clearly. And they've lost pure side of the gospel. All they really care about are the cult rules from the 40s and 50s, <clears throat> and they're so stuck in that world, they're, <laughs> they're telling people, you can't get your hair cut like these people. There's not a single person in his audience <laughs> who wants to get a Beatles haircut. I know, man. It, it's, it's so ridiculous. But, you know, yeah, it is. It's crazy because, you know, and like you said, it's not just one or two. There, there were many, many people surrounding Branham, very close to Branham, that were homosexual and it's like you know and I, I know there's been been other research about you know about Branham himself and 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 there's been things that have been said and shown and and people can come to their own interpretation on some of that stuff but you know it's it's crazy how these ministers will will repeat these things that Branham said and completely ignore just blanket ignore all of this stuff because they I mean I don't know about this guy in particular, but I know a lot of ministers that we've we've investigated have talked about these accusations. So they, a, a good portion of them at least, do know that they exist, but they just blanket ignore it and act like it didn't happen and it's not there. And then they'll go and continue to repeat these things and demonize people potentially in their congregation and and say that if you if you want a Beatles haircut, then that's got a homosexual spirit on it. It's just so insane, the fear-mongering and all this stuff that, like you said, I mean, you are you wake up one morning, your hair is just a little one way, and you think, oh, no, that maybe looks like a Beatles haircut. Am, am, am I maybe not straight anymore? It's just like, what in the world is going on in these groups, man? It's, it's insanity. Yeah, you know, it's really sad because these men, like I say, they're stuck in the 40s, 50s, and sometimes 60s most of them are stuck in the 50s it's like (laughs) it's like you when you go to one of their houses it's like you're walking into an episode of leave it to beaver but (laughs) beaver's not allowed to have television and (laughs) it's just what can you say but these guys they're they're so stuck into this that they've lost reality with what is the world today and whenever they try to bring up the world today they're so far off the mark they don't even understand the world that they live in all they understand is the world from William Branham's perspective, and they don't even understand William Branham's perspective because most of them will reject the notion of Branham working with all of these key figures in Christian identity and racism and all of this. They just overlook it and tune out the very racist things that he said and preach around it. And then what happens is because they're doing this and, and because they've lost focus of the gospel, their sermons are 
aren't really like sermons. They start pointing out things in today's world that really have no relevance to anything to do with church, and they bring up topics that they themselves don't understand because you can't really run today's world through William Branham's 1950s filter. It doesn't. The two are completely different worlds, right? And so what you end up with with is this mess, and the people sit there, and they have been mistakenly, well, they've been manipulated and indoctrinated to believe that this confusing mess is somehow the gospel. And I'll never forget, whenever I left the you know, the message church that we attended, which was the Branham Tabernacle, and we started going to a new church, I heard the gospel for the first time, I'm like, well, dang, what is this? I never heard this before. And <laughs> <laughs> I started reading the Bible and trying to rip all of this nonsense and garbage out of my head. And <clears throat> again, it was like taking the Looney Tunes of religion, ripping it out and, oh, wow. Well, that's the simple gospel. Why did they never tell me this? <laughs> because it's too simple, John. <laughs> that's, yeah. the, that's the reason. It doesn't have enough rules and control in it. That's why. Oh, man. Yeah, but, you know, Rolling into this next clip here, um, this this is this is a fascinating one for me because I, I I think it kind of touches on a few of the things that um, I've been sort of thinking about here as as we've been kind of going through some of these examples. But you know the the <laughs> and the minister says it at the end of this in the end of this clip, and 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 I think it's I think it's I think it's really one of the biggest problems in this movement. One of his the last things that he says here is. You know, if the prophet says, you know, says no to I, I love Lucy, throw it out the window. If it says no to Pat Boone, throw it out the window. It's already been weighed. And that's how so many ministers and even followers look at it in, in this movement is if the prophet said it, then it's inspired. It's already been weighed. God has already made his statement on on what these these things are, true or false, good or bad, and it's our duty just to live up to it. It's already been weighed, conform. And, you know, it's so sad because, you know, it's, <laughs> you know, you're, you're, you're conforming to, to, a, to a false religion, a false gospel. But, and so many people have, have been, have been, um, you know, hoodwinked by, by this. And, and, you know, it's sad to see, but, you know, rolling into this clip here, let, let's take, let's take a deeper look and see what the minister has to say for himself. So prophets on the scene, God's on the scene. So you have a, as I preached on before, you've got two, two dimensions here. You have the man in the three dimension and God coming out of another dimension. So you've got a two dimensional picture here. God is being seen in a picture. God is using a vessel. So they both sold out. That's exactly right. The biggest deceiver I know of is Pat Boone. Really can't. We would think Pat Boone was as Mr. Innocent. Is that true? We're worldly, right? And we, and we as worldly guys thought that was just too clean. And here's what a prophet's saying. This is what a prophet's saying about Pat Boone. Okay, I'll show you Pat Boone. Don't you worry. And all the rest of them. It shows the devil satisfying that of Hollywood. And these people telling you Elvis Presley is nothing against the man, only he's a sinner. But I want to say something. He's religious because he sings songs on, brother, here's my conception. There's one difference between Judas as a carrot and Elvis Presley. He was a Pentecostal boy. Judas is a carrot, got 30 pieces of silver. Elvis Presley got a fleet of Cadillacs and a million dollars. They both sold out. You listen to Elvis Presley sing Amazing Grace. I'll tell you what, that is an incredible voice. We want, I don't want to shock, maybe I've already used it or not, but I wanted to look up Only Believe, the author of Only Believe. I, Type in only believe. And you know what comes up? Elvis Presley singing, only believe. Woo! 
We're talking about a devil in loose weight shoes. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, I mean, he's stuck in the 50s, man. Who? What person in the church is even going to care who is Pat Boone? What, what does it even matter now? Let's say he's right. Let's say that William Branham was right, and by some <clears throat> divine inspiration, he learned that Pat Boone was going to lead the world into the Antichrist. In what world is this guy living in, man? You've got Pat Boone. Pat Boone's fame died out a long time ago. This guy, he's no longer famous. He's no longer has any influence on the world. And yet this guy is preaching like he's, he's going to lead the world to hell, man. So these guys are preaching like a broken record just over and over. Look at this dead guy from the, you know, way back when. Well, he's, <clears throat> what, what can you say? And <laughs> like I said before, it was all stemming from racism. If you'll remember, I Love Lucy was the white supremacy target number one because she was one of the first, maybe the first interracial marriage ever portrayed on television screen. And the, the racists were coming out of the woodworks to stop her, William Branham being no exception to this rule. And this guy is continuing the racism, not even knowing that he's doing it. Right. And, and what's even crazy, and like I said earlier, talking about the filter in which these things are presented, if, if you don't know the context, if, you, if you're not hooked into the pop culture, you don't know what's going on, you don't know the history, that when the ministers present some of these things, it, it sounds like a cohesive story. It sounds like they did their research and they put it together. But the fact of it is, especially like digging into the thing he said here about Pat Boone accepting the Heavy Metal Award in 1997. Well, Pat Boone... <laughs> did 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 um uh, uh, you know uh uh some music and he titled it in a, in a metal mood no more Mister Nice Guy and the thing about it is is it was it was it was tongue in cheek it it was it was comedic it was parody and he's going and taking some of these popular metal and rock songs of the time and redoing them in his in his tone the way that he does music more slow and soft spoken and things like that same lyrics just a different way to arrange it and it's so insane and and even when he goes up to accept the award it's even a further gag because he dresses like a like a heavy metal guy of the time and it's a gag it, it's it's something that's meant to kind of be funny tongue in cheek just sort of like ha 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 the pat boone the guy who's does the gospel songs and does these 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 you know slow songs and stuff like that is is dressing like a metal guy it's meant to be funny but these ministers go and say ha ha See, Branham saw who he was the entire time. He is exposing himself. It took some time, but he finally exposed who he truly was. And when you don't know the context, it's easy to fall into this and say, okay, well, you know, that, you know, maybe that does look like what they're saying. But when you kind of dig into it, get more of the context, it's like, this isn't anything, this isn't anything like the minister is portraying it at all. Yeah, it just, it really all comes down to this, James. These men have no business being behind a pulpit. I know I'll get hate mail for saying that, but in what way does this gospel of Pat Boone come out as any way, shape, or form resembling the gospel of Jesus Christ? He, what he, they're saying essentially is the gospel of Jesus Christ is less powerful than Pat Boone because even Pat Boone can't be saved. He's part of the Antichrist agenda. And not knowing that he's talking about the racist agenda, he is limiting the power of God by saying this instead of, well, let's pray for Brother Pat Boone. Let's pray for this guy who's, you know, he's fallen into sin. If he has, I don't even, you know, I've not studied his recent life. Pat Boone may be a solid Christian for all I know and for all this guy knows he has no clue even what is pat boone or who is and what is what his mark on life is what they're saying is we ha we serve a powerless god so from behind the pulpit you have a minister literally telling his congregation hey our god is powerless come join me and let's praise branham Right. And that's the sad reality of, of this is, is so many of these ministers, the, the, they'll speak out of both sides of their mouth. And one, one side, they'll say, we don't follow a man. You know, we follow, we follow the God of the Bible. We follow Jesus Christ. But in the next, in the next, just like in this clip here, the, the minister is, is putting the picture of, of the halo up in front of his congregation as he's doing these slides to show the horribleness of Pat Boone and Elvis and all these people, um, and trying to put out a history lesson in, in front of the church. Um, you know, he, he starts off by talking about the halo photo and how it's a two dimensional picture because God is in the photo. And the, 
these men dance this fine line by trying not to say that Branham was God, even though, even though Branham in his own words, you know, <laughs> there's a reason that the deity cult rose up because Branham put, he put the stuff out there. He put the material out there for the people to, to build the deity cult around him. And, and in my own personal opinion, I believe it was by design, but you know, cause if you've got it and, and just to kind of digress a little bit, if you've got a movement like that, it is very good to have died in the wool soldiers that will do your bidding no matter what. And if they believe you're God, that is the best way to get that result. But okay, let's go, let's go back to this minister. <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's crazy because, you know, th- these ministers tout around this, this, this supposed halo photo and say that it's, it's God in the photo. And, and, you know, um, They'll, it, it's, it's crazy because I mean, we, we've gone through this. We've debunked it. It, the, you can, you, we, it's been proved ad nauseum that this is a light over his head, that it's not supernatural. It's a stage light. And just like many, many con men, stage lights and, 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 and stage practical effects are very useful in creating these sorts of movements because at the time people didn't have the technologies to, to debunk this stuff. They didn't have, um, they didn't have access to the internet. They, they didn't have access to readily search things. I mean, back in that time, if you wanted to research something deeply, you would have to go search out a public place, maybe a public library, maybe find access to books. You'd have to talk to somebody at maybe the librarian. You have to say, Hey, I'm looking for something. I don't really quite know what's going on. And you have to trust that that person is able to find it, know what book it's in, know what's going or not. And then you're also limited by the books that are in that library or maybe your your local records, um, you know, uh, county records and things like that. it's very hard to find information back then. You know, you had to do a lot of legwork. Not so much today. <laughs> I mean, we have, you know, we have, you know, newspapers, websites and, and all sorts of things. We have so many repositories online that we can do keyword searches and find these things. You know, we can find the places that, that this ha- halo photo was taken. We, we can see what the stage lights were. We can see what was going on. You know, we can see that how it looked when even the Beatles performed there. And, 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 and we, and we can put these things together and we're not limited by, the, we're not only limited by the information that's presented to us by these, by these ministers. We can search these things out for ourselves. We can put two and two together and we can come to rational conclusions instead of allowing a fake halo photo to control our minds and actions. <laughs> James, I know I'm going to get a lot of hate mail. I've said it before, but <clears throat> this is a group who does not understand the gospel at all. What they're preaching has no resemblance to the gospel. And even worse, they don't even understand how their Bibles work. Re- remember, this is a group who literally thought that the book of Nahum <laughs> was talking about Chicago because that's what this bozo said. William Branham claimed that the whole book of Nahum was prophesying, out, prophesying about how to drive in Chicago. And so the, any claim that they say the Bible prophesied of the Beatles or whatnot, none of it makes any sense. And I'm trying to picture a person who's come out, you know, from outside of the <clears throat> outside of the congregation. They're just passing by. Hey, well, that looks like a good church. And they hear something like this. Number one, these guys <laughs> are talking about things from the 50s being prophesied as some great event. And the new person scratching their head. Well, why are they talking about that? That happened way back in the 50s and 60s. What, what does this guy smoke? Are they? Is this one of those churches that's <laughs> smoking marijuana while they <laughs> while they're preaching? <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy because a lot of these ministers uh, present themselves as to be very deep researchers, and 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 and. But the thing about it is, is that they research only through the lens of what Branham said. So if actual facts come out that contradict anything that Branham said, they don't take those into account because if Branham said it, then that's the way it is, you know? And so, and because of that, it all has to fit into this worldview. They have to force reality to match Branham's version. And also, just like we said earlier, it's, 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 it's a vision of the world from, from the fifties and sixties. It doesn't even match today. And they'll, they'll try to contort it and try to make it fit to the day and, and try to say this. And they'll say, Oh, well, you know, if that was bad, then look how even worse it is now. It's so much worse and all this stuff. And, and one of the things that I 
personally have 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 trouble with is is that this fundamentalism that that we see creeping into um you know especially these message churches and stuff through being backed up by Branham's um you know horrible doctrines and um and very illiterate doctrines um is that it causes people to see the world in such a way to where all they see is boogeymen. They think, oh, the world is so far gone that, you know, there is no hope. There is no saving anybody. I, you know, I'll just be lucky if I get my family in, you know. And so they, they shut off from the world. They shut off from society. And they say, you know, it's so far gone that the, 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 the world is such in such an age of darkness that there is no saving it. And the only thing we can do is, is, you know, hope for the end because that's the only thing that's that's gonna that's gonna save it all you know it's it's sad and and you know and we, we've seen other examples of that in other episodes that we've done but you know all of this stuff demonizing the entertainment leads to that point because if you have no avenues of of anything in your life of normalcy and the only thing that you have is the cult then you lean heavier into the cult because it's the only thing in your life you're allowed to partake in safely and it's the only thing that has the seal of approval. And it's sad that, you know, ministers have to go to the fact that they have to demonize things that, that in, 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 in most cases, there, there, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing inherently wrong with what's going on here. Um, you know, but they have to demonize, you know, music that, that is not going to send people to hell, but, their prophet said it, so therefore they have to say it because it has to make sense because this is the version that they're trying to sell to people. Well, really, James, when you trace all of these things all the way back to their root, you know, by the fruits, you'll understand what this tree is. When you trace everything back, it all comes down to the point that, <clears throat> number one, William Branham did not understand the plan of salvation as it's written in the Bible. He never once, I've listened to every single recording that the man has made, not one time did he ever preach the gospel in its simplicity, not once. He tried to confuse it and add things to it and point to himself and all of this stuff. And as a result, all of the people who are indoctrinated in this, including the preachers, they're all indoctrinated in such a way they don't understand what is salvation. They don't understand what the gospel is or why it is or what Jesus means to them. They have to go through this mediator of William Branham. And First Timothy blatantly calls this out. It says there's one God and one mediator between God and mankind, Jesus Christ. Well, these guys have lifted William Branham up as this mediator that you can get to God, but you have to go through William Branham's words, and those words are stuck in the 50s, and we don't understand the era or the times, and we can't apply those today, and we don't understand the gospel of salvation, but we're going to get behind a pulpit every Sunday and tell you that we do understand salvation, and you too can be saved as long as you believe in William Branham, our mediator between God and man. To stress the point of how little they understand salvation, <clears throat> William Branham thought <laughs> he was like the he was like Gandalf, man. He could just proclaim salvation on somebody by going, "Boom! You too can be saved. Boom! <laughs> you too are saved. You too. You too." I was under the blanket of salvation when William Branham told my grandfather, "All your children and your grandchildren will be saved." So every single man <laughs> who's preaching this nonsense and condemning me as leading souls to hell, and I too am going to join them in hell. And one, one minister said, hell will be a little bit hotter for people like me. Well, no, your prophet said that I'm saved because your prophet did not understand salvation. That's how bad this is, right? <clears throat> These guys don't understand God's plan of salvation, and that's really the bottom line for all of this. And, <clears throat> you know, the stupidity of it, it is a Looney Tunes episode. We started out, we're talking about how <clears throat> you could prove how you were unsaved if you had a Beatles haircut. Well, just like William Branham saying that I can be, I'm saved because I'm my grandfather's grandson, which is absurd ridiculousness. Well, my hair can't even grow out to be a Beatles haircut. <laughs> I'm losing my hair. So there's no way that I can even be doomed to hell through this theology. They don't understand salvation. It's just ridiculous. It's, it's beyond a weird doctrine. This is just I've used this word once before on our show, but I'll say this is stupid. <laughs> That's all it is. If you have weird doctrines that you'd like for us to discuss on the show, you can contact us on the web. 
you can find us at william-branham.org. For an in-depth look at the dangers of being in these groups, read Weaponized Religion from Latter Rain to Colonia Dignidad, available on Amazon, Kindle, and Audible. 